position in the alphabet. And that means that the alphabet stacks up in three layers, just like it does according to traditional teachings, except now the letters are, are on this symmetrical object. Kind of interesting. And then I noticed something else that was very strange. Again, this was the, this was the hardest part. And I, I must have spent, gee, it was several weeks just staring at this stuff, scratching my head, saying, what can I possibly do to compare that alphabet to that verse? Well, if I finally was reduced to littering idiot status, which is the proper humble position for learning anything, after trying all the, the tricks of, of set theory and all kinds of permutations and, and wild charts and graphs and this and that, I was reduced to blithering idiot status, and I merely decided to check off on the cube the letters that were used in the first verse and cut away the rest of the cube and see what I had left. So I did that. I took a cube. Now, in this case, it's just the points, not little cubelets. And I checked off the letters that occurred in the first verse, and I cut away the letters that didn't occur. And I was left with this object. And I was very surprised, because it had no right to be symmetrical. And yet it was. Now, that could be by just coincidence, could be random. A statistician friend over at UC Berkeley a few weeks ago said that he, he did some quick test and he thought maybe one time in a hundred if you did what I did you'd get a symmetrical object. It's not a hard and fast rule, but that's a nice number. So it may, might, have been, might have meant something. I didn't know what. But then I noticed something really extraordinary. I noticed that in this first verse, some letters occurred once, some letters occurred twice, some letters occurred three times, and the Aleph, the letter A, occurred six times. And that's all. There aren't any letters that occur four times. There aren't any letters that occur five times. And then I noticed that the letters that occurred, and I'm only going to be looking at the first 27. I'm not looking at that last letter because I'm comparing 27 to 27. The letters that occurred an even number of times in the first verse are all on the axis of symmetry. And the letters that occurred once are opposite the letters that occurred three times. There are three of these R's. One, two, three, and one L. Three R's and one L. There are three T's and one F. There are three E's and one M. That's kind of strange. And so I decided just to see what would happen to look at R's and L's, and T's and F's, and E's and M's, and the others that are in symmetrical positions, as if they were related to each other somehow. Just because I was curious. I was desperate, that's what, what, what I was. I was really hoping to find something. And of course, when I did that, um, it got interesting very quickly. Because what I found is that every group of letters that were in symmetrical positions. Now, you don't have to have a cube to know they're in symmetrical positions, because the way the Cartesian coordinate system works, you get mirror image coordinates. The 201 letter is in symmetrical position to the 102 letter. And if a letter is self-symmetric, it'll have a symmetrical count, such as 202 or 212. It'll be on the axis of symmetry, which is the main diagonal of the cube, diagonal plane of the cube. Um, in the, the packets we have there, there's a template for making your own cubes those of you who want to pick those up later. Well, let's see what happens. I have a, an R. I have another R. Then I get my first L. Then I get an R. R, R, L, R. Well, let's look at the T's and the F's. I get a T. I get another T. I get an F. Then I get a T. T, T, F, T. Gee, that's strange. That's the same order. E, E, M, E. You mean they're all going to do that? Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you go through the text, the first time a letter is used in any verse, in the same verse, a letter on the symmetrical side of the cube is used. Now, that's too often to be coined. There's one exception, by the way, and that exception turns out to be even more interesting. The, um, by the way, the, the Y's uh, the I's and the B's are reversed. It's I, B, I, I, because this initial B pairs with this final sadi, final Z, to make this 
spin axis, which I'll show you later. And this is kind of a reverse handoff to the next sentence. And so the pattern's the same, but it's turned upside down because it's hooking to the other thing. It's sort of a reverse thing. It keeps, keeps flipping on itself. And we'll see a little more about how that, that fits together later. But here's the interesting thing. You know, if you look for 20 years, and you're reasonably clever, you're going to find patterns. There's no big deal to finding patterns. The question isn't whether you can find patterns. The question is whether they have any meaning. If you introduce an idea, and it has nothing to do with what you're doing, you won't get any new information out by using that idea. You know, if you're trying to listen to the hi-fi, you turn the light on in the room, it doesn't change the sound for most people. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> sure these days. Um, but if you do something, and when you turn that crank, you use that little tool, all kinds of things happen, and they're interesting things, and you start to get, get a sense of what you're doing, you get more out than you put in, then you have a right to suspect strongly that what you did had something to do with what you did it to. When I shine the light of base three on the text, all of a sudden, I start to get patterns. The only thing you can tell about this pattern is, one, it certainly isn't a coincidence. And in fact, um, researchers at UCLA and at bar Ilan University in Israel and at Technion in, in Haifa, Israel, have done statistical tests on the text. They hadn't done it when I first did this, but they have now. And there's no question that there's letter-level coding throughout the five books of Moses. They've also found some coding in the Gospels, but because these are Jews doing the work, Orthodox Jews, they don't want to talk about that in public. So if there are any Christians out here who don't know about the Gospels, you'll have to do the work for yourself, because the rabbis won't do it for you. Well, one thing does come of this. When I use base 3 to count out the letters, the whole first verse becomes one unit. There aren't any letters left over. Everything has its place. Well, what, what can I do? I still can't identify what that looks like. There's another teaching, a rabbinic teaching. And the teaching is that the Torah is eternal. The Torah is unique. It's not just a bunch of stories. It's not like anything else, not even like anything else sacred in Judaism, such as the Talmud, which is extremely important. The basis of Jewish practice is in the Talmud. But the Torah can't even be compared to the Talmud. That would be sacrilege. Torah is so unique, it can only be compared to itself. So I decided to compare it to itself. It seemed reasonable. How do you compare a text to itself? Well, now, are we back to literary criticism? Should I look at the, the first story in Genesis of, Gen of the creation and the second and compare how they differ? Well, that's already been done. It wasn't very satisfying. And besides, it didn't give me anything new to work with. I'm looking at the letters. So I said, what would happen if I compared the letters to themselves? And that's what I did. You know how you make a paper doll or a paper airplane? Take a piece of paper, and you stick tab A into slot A, and then you put tab B into slot B, and tab C into slot C. You auto-correlate it. You correlate it with itself. Tab A with slot A, tab B with slot B. And the piece of paper folds up, hopefully, into the model it was intended to make. And so I decided to fold up this string of letters in such a way that letters that were the same were going to be next to each other. And if I couldn't find letters that were the same, I was going to allow myself one other piece of freedom. I was going to allow myself to choose letters that were in symmetrical positions on my cube. Now, ultimately, I did things a little more complicated than that yet, but I don't think we have time to go into those details. And besides, it's not relevant to the first verse. Well, how do you do that? What I did is I took myself a piece of paper and I wrote the text out on it. Actually, I took a piece of uh, really backgammon chips on the tabletop. But the easiest way to see this is to think of these letters as on a string, as little pearls on a string that you can push around. And then I curled the string up such that the same letters came into relationship with each other. And here it is. You start over here first letter, and you go around following this little curve, this little coil. These first three letters line up with their recurrence. That's these three and these three. They line up together. There's another sequence of three. A, T, E, A, T, E. Well, they're up here. And likewise with all the others. 
You'll notice that either the same letters are paired with each other or letters 